and um, also on the other side, it goes all around practically. And here goes like that. Like this. Okay. It's on the surface. Um, these are perfect conductors. So in here, perfect conductors. And it um, says that this one acts as a transmission line because one current goes from one wire and then the other is the return wire. And it's as, and it gives you everything. It gives you this Z. And what else it gives you? Um, remind me, does it give you the area in the problem? It gives the length and the distance between the wires. Ah, okay. What does it say about the size of the wires? Does it say anything? Yes, it says that they're two centimeters. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. It, it actually does, it would give you the area because it gives you the radius. Uh, okay. Yeah, it gives, and then, yeah, it also gives you the, uh, the distance between the leads and the, uh, the length of the leads as well. Okay, so, and then let's assume that this is the area, A. All right. All right. Now, these wires, you can consider them as conductors um, that have charge, positive and negative, or as conductors that have current. All right. So, the way we have it, if it's a, a current that flows and then it's not a steady current, like a current, for example, that goes like this in the time domain. This is not a steady current, all right? It moves with a velocity, obviously, but that changes over time because of the cosine function. So there is a derivative in this, a velocity. And so um, that creates both an electric and a magnetic field. But now we will go into electrostatics and magnetostatics to be able to find those quantities. Let's assume that first of all, it asks us to find the capacitance. Is it the capacitance per unit length or the whole capacitance that is asking? Yes, the per, per, per unit length. Okay, perfect. Capacitance C per unit length. Okay, how would we find the capacitance in this? Of course, we, we don't know how to find it ourselves. So in the book, there is a formula and I will get the formula from the book that shows that, where it is, because we, we have not solved that problem. Um, but the book has here, let me find the page. There, it shows on page five, five, five. Okay, so on page. We find that the capacitance per unit length for this one is. That's for the medium, again, assuming it's free space for us. And it's hyperbolic cosine of D over 2A, where um, 2A is the diameter, D is the separation. Okay, so it's hyperbolic cosine. I think inverse of D over A where A is 2A is diameter. So practically we have the area A is P 
a squared. So from here, we find that a is square root of a over b. So that is the first one, to find the capacitance per unit length. And then uh, what else does it say? And then it also wants the inductance per unit length. Okay. And then the inductance, inductance per unit length, according to this also, is mu over p, the book. So page. is p a um, mu over p is mu over p and then hyperbolic uh, times hyperbolic cosine d over 2a times Okay, and that should be in farads per meter, depends, I mean, it, epsilon has the units, all right, and mu is in Henry's per meter, if you use the values. And then what is asking for? And then the final part is asking for the input impedance uh, when, the volt when it's excited by a voltage source uh, of 10 gigahertz. Okay. This one, so I will do something uh, different I, since I went this far about this. I'm not going to stop there so you have also something, but I will assume then now that we have a transmission line, I will solve a separate problem. Um, consider, so problem two. Did it give you there the uh, value, the, the input impedance of the um, diode? It wants us to find the input impedance of the diode, but it doesn't give us the load resistance. It, all we're told is that uh, the diode itself has a small DC conductance. So oh, the, okay. The, yeah, I'm just like confused on that part because when I look for the formula in the book, it relies on a, on a, on a load impedance. So I wasn't sure how to like, make that assumption given that we know that it has a small DC conductance. Okay, just a second. So it says a small, a small DC conductance. Yes. Okay. And one, one second. That's okay if it has a small DC conductance. For, um, because you will see what is happening. So we'll do a more general, a more general problem, all right? So practically, does it say how long is the, uh, it gives you a length, but the length yes, is, we have right. a length. Yeah, okay. So here is what we are gonna do based on what we've learned today. So the second problem is consider a transmission, an ideal transmission line When I say ideal transmission line, it means not a two conductor line, not a coaxial, not a microstrip. It means like these two wires, the symbolic and ideal transmission line is when I use this symbolic representation, which is like this. And then, all right, and let me use this one for here. That's an ideal transmission line. And usually the ideal transmission line. Uh, Dr. Kutay? Yes. Oh, Max had a question still on the previous problem. So okay. On those first two parts, uh, the epsilon in this case would be epsilon naught and the mu would be mu naught. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Yes. I just wanted to verify that. Yes, perfect. Yeah. So, so let's assume that we have a line that now I'm giving you the following parameters. Um, this is L, L, let me see, one second, I'm going to do it right. So 
so that's L. And then this line at the end has a small DC resistor. So practically, we assume it's short. All right, if it says a very small DC and does not give it, I will assume short. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, with, so let me see here. So with a short at the end in this case. Okay, then I will uh, assume in this problem that the line is lossless. Okay, so find the input impedance on the line so this is a a prime b b prime and let's assume that here i have v a a prime and here i have i a a prime in this solution so practically, I need to find Z at A, A prime to be V, A, A prime divided by I, A, A prime. Okay, now let's see how we are gonna solve this problem. Um, you can, we know L and C from this we have given it, all right? So assume with the sort at the end, and, and here for assumption, and L equals, let me think. Let's assume that L is three nano Henry's per unit length. And um, C is four picofarads per unit length. Okay, so let's assume that this is what I get. Then I, I um, practically let me, in fact, even, yeah, I put a unit length here. And uh, what did I give you? Let's assume that the length also. So I'll put here maybe per centimeter, centimeter, okay? And I give you that the length of the line L is 10 centimeters. Let's assume that I do that. These are the data. Okay. Um, so that's what we wanna find. We wanna find the input impedance. How do we define the input impedance? Oops. The input impedance in this line, I will take it down here. All right, solution. So input impedance, and we call it input impedance because here is our source, all right? And that's what I said, that in this case, we have a source V. Not. And we are in the frequency domain, but our source is on the left. And the frequency is that's operating, it says omega. I, I will I will give here a frequency f, which is 10 gigahertz. Uh, no, one. Maybe six. Okay, that's what I'm giving you, that the source. Oh, let's in fact move this down because I need to know. So, um, and then move this one here and say this line, line is excited by 
a source V not and where V not is one volt and operate the frequency okay so here you want to find the solution this is the question all right so um we found the expression for the input impedance so practically in this problem i will have to find how much is the voltage at VAA, which is V0, but now for this V0, I want to find the current, all right? So since, since already I have VAA prime equals V0, then I need to find I A A prime. Do you agree? If I find that, then I found the input impedance. Okay. So how are we gonna do that? Today, first of all, today we learn two things. We know the following: that um, the solution on this line. V of Z or I of Z or I, for example, or V, let me just, it does not matter. I will write both just as a review. So we know, first of all, that V of Z in this line has two components. V naught plus E to the minus J beta Z, all right, plus V naught minus E to the J beta Z. Is that correct? And then we know that I of Z equals um, I naught plus E to the minus J beta Z plus I naught minus E to the J beta Z. All right? So that is things that we know. What else do we know? Beta is omega square root of LC. So is two pi F square root of LC. That we know, and we'll find it eventually. Then what else do we know? That characteristic impedance is V naught plus over I naught plus. And also this one, if you see from the book, is V not minus, we did not cover that, I not minus. So that's all we need to know. And then, um, then we just need to go and follow, we'll assume here that Z1, let me see what the book is using, just one second, as well as Z. Where does the book put AZ equals zero? Ah, oh, perfect. So the book places z equals zero at the source. So we're gonna take this one here again. Copy. So we're gonna move it down here, paste. Okay. So um, we are going, I'm gonna erase this at this moment. And I will place a coordinate system. And this is L. And this is zero. All right. So now um, let's, and then also we know that this is square root of LC. Let's try to find, therefore, from one, two, three, 
and four. Okay, let's try to find three first of all. From three, and I found also L and C, so we have that beta that we have. The beta is what? Two by L, and then we have square root here, L. How much did we say it was three nanohenries per centimeter? Three. So I'll put here 10 to minus nine for nanohenry per centimeter. And then I will move that a little further out. Let me see here. In fact, no, I'll move this here. So we have space. And then I will extend this one for a moment. And then I will move maybe this one down here. Okay, that's L. C is four picofarads per centimeter. So C is times four, times four. How much is pico minus 12? Let me move this a little further down. Okay. And I have farads per centimeter. All right. So let's see what we get. Two by F. And then 12. 10 to minus 21. And then we have eight hundreds per centimeter times farads per centimeter. All right. So how much do you, do you remember what happens with this one? How much is this? Um, do you remember that we have from circuits, we had that omega resonant frequency is two pi f, which is radians per hertz, radians hertz, radians per second rather. And this one was one over square root of LC. You remember that? Yes. I don't hear anything, so. Obviously, let's then do something else. Um, Henry, how much is one Henry? You mean in terms of other units? Yes. So we said also, let me, uh, let me then, uh, where am I gonna go with that? Uh, let me see. Here, let me, some other. So in fact, you're gonna find out that let me let me just do this here. So, um, when you have this one, omega is radian per second or radian hertz. So, l l c square square root of one over square root of l c practically is um, from here. 
it means the square root of LC practically is one over omega. It's like the inverse unit of a radial frequency. All right. So it is seconds divided by rad or it is one over rad times hertz. You remember that, all right? That is from resonant circuits. So that is the units practically of a square root of this is equal to one over rad hertz. So when you have that beta is omega square root of LC, so beta in reality is just a um, different, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a number, if you like, that all it is a number. And um, beta also is expressed as, let me see here that I have this, just I, go, I don't want to say things that they are not there for a second. One moment. So, beta here, transmission line equations, and it has beta. Okay, beta is, all right, omega square root of LC, what is the units? Practically, what I wanted to say is there's going to be one over, because there are units per, per unit length. Um, I don't want to make it, I will just make it a statement from, I will just make a statement here and then uh, you can um, go and look for it. But the statement that I have is the, is the following, from circuits, from circuit theory. So I will make it as a statement. So from circuit theory, when it comes, when we have an LC combination, we do have that the resonant frequency of that is one over square root of LC, which means from here, as simply as that, I will do that LC, when L and C are not in units, in per unit length, all right, these are per unit length values. These are for a circuit theory in Henry's and in Farad's. So the square root of this is one over um, omega sub r, which means the square root of the units of Henry times Farad is practically um, one rad um, uh, hertz. Let me put hertz there. Okay, that these are the units if um, from circuit theory. But I will rem I will state this here, and then I will find some reference for you. Okay, so if that's the case. Then when I have this one here, that is not only Henry's and Parrot's, but it has, they are divided, each one of them by centimeters length. So beta then becomes from, what do we call five? So from five, What do we have that beta is equal to two pi f and how much do we say f was a gigahertz? So this is 10 to the nine and the unit for that is radians, hertz, okay? 
and then that is multiplied by the square root of 12, 10 to minus 21. And here now, what we have is square root of H F divided by centimeter. Now, this one and this in terms of units disappear because of this relationship that I have. They give one. So practically the value of beta is a number over centimeter. And so here is how it goes, two pi 10 to the nine. Here I will have, I'm taking out 10 to minus 20 and I will leave 1.2 here, 10 to minus 10, all right? Because that's what I got out of the square root, one over centimeter. And from here, I calculate that beta is two pi, how much is square root of one over two? Let me see. Square root of 1.2. 1.2 square root, no, square root 1.09 times 1.09 times 10 to minus 1 centimeter minus 1. So then that gives us two times pi times 1.09 equals divided by 10 is 0.684 centimeter minus one. And that's practically in runs. All right. when you find, because eventually it's an exponent. So, what we have from here is, um, we found beta. And we, we can find Z naught, which is the square root of LC, which is the square root of um, L we found in, in um, per unit length, obviously. And then L per unit length is three, three times 10 to minus nine Henry's per centimeter over four, 10 to minus 12 farads per centimeter. This goes, and that is gonna be in ohms. So it's gonna be square root of three quarters times 10 to the third ohms. So that is going to give divided by four equals times one equals square root. So it's twenty eight, twenty seven point four ohms. Twenty seven point four ohms. So we found Z naught from the formula. And we found beta. You need to remember that always, so here is what I will remind you. Beta is always in rads per centimeter. Let me write it differently, rads. Per 
per centimeter. That will, this will be the units of beta and the units for the characteristic impedance is omega. So the only thing you need to do is when you write your inductances, you write them per unit length. And if, for example, is Henry's per meter, then your beta is gonna come out as rads per meter. If it's um, in, uh, if, if they are in per centimeter, it's gonna come rads per centimeter. If they are in millimeters, all right? So if it is, for example, um, inductance is so many Henry's per millimeter, capacitance is so many Henry's per millimeter, at the end, your beta is gonna be in rads per millimeter. So the only thing that you have to do when you plug in values is to make sure that you have converted everything to Henry's per unit length or farads per unit length. Keep the same unit length. Don't mix up meters with centimeters. Just either you will go with all in centimeters, either you will go in all in meters, either you will go all in millimeters. And that is gonna always give you beta in rads per whatever in centimeters or whatever your unit length is. When you go to a characteristic impedance, the unit lengths cancel out and you always have, if you keep your inductance in Henry's, your capacitance in farads, then your characteristic impedance is gonna always come to be ohms. Is that um, clear for the units, the circuit units? So keep, yes. that in, keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have beta, let's write it again, what we found. We found that beta is 0.684 rads per centimeter, one. We found Z naught to be 27.4 ohms. Okay, now if we, with these two, we can go here and practically we have um, these two equations, so I will take them down here to see. So that is part of the solution, but to continue, I'm writing this a little bit, we're not gonna be that extensive, it's just in the beginning we do that. As we solve more and more problems like this, we're gonna go faster. So paste, paste here. All right, so now look what I can do. Because of this relationship, I can rewrite my these two equations Look how I can rewrite them. I can rewrite them as follows. And it's all in the book also, if you wanna know, but I'm rewriting it here for practice. V of Z is gonna be V naught plus E to the minus J beta Z, which we know what it is, the beta, plus V naught minus E to the J beta Z, and we know what beta is. And then for I of Z, instead of I naught plus, I'm gonna put one over Z naught, which I know, and then I will have V naught plus E to the minus J beta Z, minus, because of this minus sign, B naught minus E to the J beta Z. All right, so I wrote this in this convenient form. Okay, now in terms of what they gave us about the line, everything that we have here, we know what it is. Now let's try to see what the conditions are on the source end and on the load. What do we know about what happens at the source? Let's try to remember, so what happens at the source? So at, what have they told us about the source? How much is the source voltage? 
think it's at one volt. Yes, one volt. Where does this happen? At z equals zero. Do you agree? Look at this one. I have one volt at z equals zero. Correct? Now I can go here and write it. So my V of Z, I'm going to use this and two stars here. From star, I find that V naught becomes V is V of Z when Z is equal to zero, which means that V naught, which is one volt, is equal from the star equation, V naught plus, plus V naught minus, okay? That's I have from that, my relationship. What else I know? At the load, what happens at the load? What do we know that is happening at the load? We have a short, you remember? What happens to the voltage at the short? What is the voltage in V, B, B prime? Uh, zero. Zero. So let's see where is that becoming zero. So at the load, Z equals L. So then now I'm taking the star equation and I rewrite it. V naught at z equals l, v, excuse me, is equal v naught plus e to the minus j beta l, because I'm at z equals l, all right, plus v naught minus e to the j beta l. So that's what I got from this equation. Do you agree? from this one up there. I put just C equals L. Yes. Okay. And then how much is that? Zero. So this is zero. So now, what does that tell me? That V naught plus, first of all, from here, I have that V naught plus equals minus V naught minus. That's number one. And then I have a second equation. So let me write both equations together. So because then you can see I have two equations with two unknowns. So let me call this equation now. A and this is equation B. All right, so from A and B, I will write them together. So I have V naught plus plus V naught minus equals one. And I have V naught plus E to the minus J beta L plus V naught minus e to the j beta l equals zero. So practically, if I call this um, c and d, from d, it gives us that v naught plus equals minus, I thought in the beginning, see, that's why it was good I wrote one, because I thought in the beginning there were plus zero, that is one. So V naught minus is equal, V naught plus is equal from the second to minus V naught minus E to the J to beta L. Do you see that? I divide both sides with these, with E to the minus J beta L. Okay, so in fact, if I do this intermediately, if I do the intermediate, so you can see it, it's V naught plus E to the minus J beta L, E to the minus J beta L, 
equals minus v naught minus e to minus j beta e to the plus beta l e to the minus j beta l and that gives us v naught plus equals minus v naught minus e to the j to beta l agreed And then what else do I have? That V naught plus plus V naught minus equals one. So now I can find both of them because I really have everything. So let's see what I have. Um, let me write it. So what do we wanna keep? Well, I will find both of them. So here if we solve, um, I replace V naught plus in the second equation. This is E and F. So from F plus E, what do I get? That um, V, V naught minus, minus e to the j to beta l plus one equals one or v not minus equals one over one minus e to the j to beta l okay and therefore v not plus according to E and then according to E V naught plus will be minus E to the J to beta L one minus e to the j to beta l and this is v plus okay so now i have i have two things i have v of z and i have i of z and if i do that then i can find v of z so, I remind you here. Excuse me, I made a mistake in the signs. And then here I have, if you remember, Okay, so now that I have the above, what can I write? First of all, maybe I cannot even, before I go there, the, I'm interested at the input impedance here. So the input impedance in, at z equals zero. What I'm interested in finding out now that I have been here, let me write, let, um, let me write it here. So we want to find z input at z equals zero, which is v at z equals zero divided by i at z equals zero. Do you agree with that? That's what we wanted to find at the end. So from these above equations we have from here, we have that z input at z equals zero is v naught plus plus v naught minus z naught 
V0 plus minus V0 minus. That's what I have. So practically, to even simplify it further, is Z0, V0 plus, plus V0 minus over V0 plus minus V0 minus. And to simplify it even further, I write it as Z naught, one plus V naught minus over V naught plus, one minus V naught minus over V naught plus. Okay, now this is the easiest one. And I can write it here because now look at this i have an expression look at this one from e i can just take e even i found the other formulas you can use the other formula so you can go directly to e and then what do you have from e We have V naught minus over V naught plus, let's see E. V naught minus over V naught plus is E to the minus, E to the minus J to beta L. Do you agree with the minus sign in front? So from here, we have that this is minus E. So minus E to the... Um, Minus J. Okay, so because practically it's like I multiply both sides where it is here. To find V naught minus over V naught plus, from here it's minus E to the minus J to beta L. So that's what I have here. So I take this and I put it inside this equation. So I take this one and I put it here. And what do I have? I have that Z in is equal. Z naught we have found, let me put it here in before I plug in things. One minus e to the minus j to beta l. One plus e to the j minus to beta l. So that's all we found from all of this solution. Well, now what do we have? We have z naught where equals twenty four, like. 24 what? 24, 27.4, 4. 27 4. Ohms, beta is minus 0.64, I believe. 684, <laughs> 684 rads per centimeter. Okay, and how much is L? How much did I say L was in this problem? Mm -hmm. Did I say L, how much L was? L, 10 centimeters. And L, where L is 10 centimeters. That's all that I need to know to find the input impedance. So Z in equals 27.4, one minus E to the minus J, two times 
0.684 times 10, and that's in radians, all right? Rads. And then one plus E to the minus J, two times 0.684 times 10 rads. Okay, how much is that one? Yes. I have to run to a lecture, but will you post the rest of the assignment? Ah, yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I will post it right now after we're done. How much is that one? So we have that two times 0.684 times 10 rads is equal two times 0.684 times 10, okay, in rads, so I have to do rads here, how much, in, in, well, rads, no, ah, forget that. So we have from the beginning, two times, we need to uh, I do better with degrees. Six, eight, four times 10, yes. I divide it by D and D mm, minus 360 minus 360, okay, that is equal to, equivalent to 63.8 degrees, because practically I found seven, some, 700 something. If you, if you exchange that from rads to degrees, you will find, I'll tell you how much is it. Plus 360, plus 360, seven. So what I found it was 783.8 degrees, but I subtract two times 360 and it give me the same. Do you understand why I'm doing that? So that's what I have. So finally, Z input equals 27.4, one minus E to the minus J 63.8, one plus E to the minus J 63.8. So practically, you will find that this one, is an imaginary number. You will find your Z input is an imaginary number. That's what you're gonna find if you just do these calculations. They look, they look long because I did them very extensively and I did like the theory also with that. Okay, but that's how you find the input impedance just using the theory. In the future, after we go, this is only just to go through the theory, but in the future, we are gonna have already the formulas for the input impedance. So it's gonna be easier to calculate those. So we are gonna see in the future that Z input for any line equals Z naught, and then is Z naught plus J Z naught tangent, beta L, ZL, excuse me, that is the load, and then Z naught plus J ZL tangent, beta L. So these are the formulas we're gonna have to use. So you will not have to do even all of this. 
whatever I did is not going to be needed because you're going to find this formula and we're going to use this formula. So the moment you know Z naught and you know beta, you find the input impedance of any line that has a load at the end. But we are going to say that for now, I just uh, gave you that homework just to, to do a review of the material we did in class. That's the whole thing. Any questions you have about that? Uh, are you going to have more problems solved or can I ask another question? Go, no, ask another question. Okay, so. I cannot hear you. Yeah, I muted myself, sorry. Oh.